Let's go. Oh, Just you. Not you. Right? Well, we've been here as far as I can remember, generations and generations. My great 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 grandmother's home back here in the canyon. This is the home of the Chowhunter people, which means near to water. As an Navajo person, uh, I, in our culture, everything has a uh, life force, even the rocks, um, uh, plants, uh, animals. Right across the way there, I, when they first started this, a week after my ceremony, I found this herd and I filmed it. And, uh, as I was filming, a rainbow came down from right behind me as I was filming and touched down and it was like, that was a point where it was very spiritual for me. And I knew I found my calling. You know. Growing up, Ron Jackson watched the wild horses run free around his family home on the Navajo Reservation. The Red Rocks are part of the Navajo landscape and um, these horses are just as much as a landscape, part of it as uh, a tree is or the, the rocks themselves. Um, I feel that they're, when they're gone, it's, it's lonely. It's like it's not, something's missing. God, it's cold. Look. To him, the horses embody the untamed spirit of the land. But today, his heart is sick as he watches the herds slowly disappear. Back in February of 2018, I got a email from a person that works within the tribe that person told me that the, the tribe was planning a horse hunt. So, and she couldn't release the information on her own for fear of losing her job. I posted it on our Indigenous Horse Nation Protector Alliance um, website on Facebook and within a couple of days we got 4,000 shares. It, it spread like wildfire. We shut down the Fish and Wildlife website on Thursday. By Monday morning, the president had canceled it. We send it. That's in three days. Tribal officials say there are too many feral horses roaming the land, competing with livestock for food and water. In speaking out, Jackson has found himself aligned against powerful forces within the tribe. Primarily, I would feel it's cattle. Um, people that have a lot of cattle or sheep. Um, there are a lot of cattle people on the tribal council and within the upper administration. There's elk up there. They make a lot of money selling elk permits, I mean like thousands of dollars. So they want the horses gone. To me the whole tribe is involved in this and they're making, someone's making money um, from within and it's a cash cow for them. They were pretty like pissed off at not only me but the, the group. There was calling us a bunch of horse huggers, tree huggers, and liberals, and you know that kind of stuff, and saying that uh, they'll go and come out here and shoot them anyway. Well, apparently that happened. Even though the horse hunts have stopped, the herds continue to disappear. Jackson says he has followed unmarked trailers late at night, filled with stolen horses. He fears they are being taken to out-of-state kill buyers. The ones that are identified get loaded up and hauled down to Mexico where they're slaughtered rather cruelly. And uh, they're primarily slaughtered for, uh, for sales to people that eat horses in Japan or Europe primarily. Uh, they can't slaughter horses in the United States against the law. In 2018, the Navajo Nation offered $50 to encourage the removal of free-roaming horses from tribal lands. The program is funded through a $250,000 grant from the U.S. Department of the Interior. Traditionally, the Navajo people never put value on um, basic things like air or, or water. You can't put a value on them. Them being our sacred relatives, um, the value is having them remain free and wild. After all that the horse has meant to the Navajo Nation, Jackson feels that the tribe has turned its back on the sacred teachings and traditions.
Navajo people are against it, and our medicine people are against it, the elders are against it, yet our government ignores all that. They say there's too many, which I don't believe there are because I don't see that many. They say there's 75,000 out here. There's not 75,000. There's very few herds left. I feel that they're, at the rate they're depleting them, there's not going to be much. There's going to be normal wild horses, and once they're gone, you know, it's going to be a part of Navajo culture will be gone, not a part of Navajo will be gone. It won't be the same. After dozens of threats and a beating that put him in the hospital, Jackson will not stop or slow down the fight. Basically greed and the profit to be made from just like what happened to us 100 years ago is happening to the horses. Removal, relocation, and eventually slaughter. A whole herd went missing one, one morning and I just felt like I had to do something. I just couldn't sit back and not do nothing. That's why I trying to get the horse issue through my art and photography to the outside world and let, let know what's going on out here on the reservation. Ultimately, Jackson wants to open a wild horse rescue refuge or sanctuary, maybe in the Redstone Valley near his home. There's about 15 of them there and that's really, it, 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 it makes my heart happy again, you know. Just see them just great in there, like it should be, if it was, you know, and it should be. Our grandchildren shouldn't have to look in history books or the videotapes to see, to see this kind of uh, freedom that the horses have right now. They belong just as they are, just like that. Reporting for Buffalo's Fire on the Navajo Reservation, I'm Charles Kennedy.